Hello, welcome back to Deep Well Bible Studies. Again, this is an audio format of the written Bible studies you can find at www.deepwellbiblestudies.com. The study is called The Woe of the Sixth Trumpet, Part 2. It's the second part of a two part study that we've been doing here in the Deep Well Audio. So, with the word of wisdom from our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let us begin this study. Woe of the Sixth Trumpet, Part 2. Bits of a Fiery Furnace As we've seen in Part 1 of the study, the third of the world's population, who are Christians, will be spiritually destroyed when the first woe, which is the woe of the fifth trumpet, passes, and the second woe, which is the woe of the sixth trumpet, comes upon all the earth. Revelations chapter 9, verses 12-15, through 15, it says, One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. When the four angels are loosed from the great river Euphrates at the woe of the sixth trumpet, which are the negative of the four living creatures that surround Jesus Christ's throne, as we can see in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1-6, through 6, the full spiritual onslaught of Satan's deception will go forth and slay the third part of men, which will be most of Christianity at that time. When the sixth angel sounds and that second woe begins, Satan will appear as the false Christ and take to his throne as the last king of Babylon in the midst of Daniel's 70th week. Satan will make his appearance as the last king of Babylon to spiritually burn down the city of Jerusalem, which I believe, spiritually speaking, represents the third who are Christians. In 2 Kings chapter 25, we see this type for the ultimate spiritual destruction of the third who are Christians at the woe of the sixth trumpet. 2 Kings chapter 25, verses 8-10, through 10, and it says, And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem. And every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. The third who are Christians' walls will be broken down and they will become burnt up with deception when Satan sits in the temple, which is the many-member body, claiming to be Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-4, through 4, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We can also see another witness to this burning up of the third in Revelations chapter 8, when the full fruition of the first trump takes place at the woe of the sixth trump. Revelations chapter 8 verse 7, and it says, The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. When all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time, which is the woe of the sixth trump, the third of the world's population that are Christians will be in the midst of a fiery furnace of Satan's deception. However, during that time, our Heavenly Father will use the final remnant of his loyal servants to pull as many of the third out of that fiery deception of Satan before the third and final woe, which is the woe of the seventh trump, comes upon the earth when the true Christ returns. These few loyal servants are the Church of Philadelphia. Revelations chapter 3, verses 7 through 13, and it says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. 
Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. With the door of our Heavenly Father's knowledge open to them, while the door of deception remains closed, they are kept from Satan's temptation that will be used to try the whole world, which includes the third who are Christians, during the woe of the sixth trump. The 232 very elect, which are the Church of Philadelphia, I believe, will be unharmed by the fiery deception, as they are delivered up to the one who sends forth that fire. We see this as a type written in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 3, verses 12 through 23, and it says, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. The 232 very elect will be delivered up to Satan directly for not worshipping his image, which is himself claiming to be the Son of God. They will be delivered up in the midst of a fiery furnace, so to speak, for a testimony. Daniel chapter 3 verses 24 through 27, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire had passed on them. Staying with this type for the delivering up of the 232 very elect, which is the Church of Philadelphia, we see that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not harmed spiritually or physically during their stay in the fiery furnace of Nebuchadnezzar. Likewise, the 232 very elect will not be hurt either. 
Luke chapter 21, verses 12 through 18, Jesus said, But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren, and kinsfolks, and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. Can we see the parallel? And as Jesus was in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Holy Spirit will be with the 232 very elect when they are delivered up, giving them a mouth of wisdom. With that mouth of wisdom only given to them by the Holy Spirit, what will come out of their mouths will pull the 144,000, which are the Church of Smyrna, out of Satan's fiery deception by activating the seeds of the seal of God that had been previously planted in their foreheads before the five-month-long hour of temptation began. The Church of Smyrna, which are the 144,000, along with many with free will, out of most if not all of the other remaining churches spoken about in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, will be pulled out of Satan's fiery deception and repent before the true Christ comes back at the seventh trump. The 144,000 and many of those with free will that repent will take part in the first death and resurrection when the true Christ returns at the seventh trump, and will join with the 232 very elect and the Zadok that return with Christ to serve in the millennial priesthood throughout the thousand years, which is the Lord's day. However, those who are found remaining in Satan's fiery furnace of deception upon the true Christ's return, the woe of the seventh trump and the Lord's wrath within it will fall upon them. Woe to them. In conclusion, let's go to Revelations chapter 1. Revelations chapter 1, verses 10 through 15, and it says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. John was taken to the Lord's day in the spirit, and he heard a great voice, as the sound of a trumpet, the seventh trumpet, that takes place after the woe of the sixth trumpet. When he turned to see the voice that spake to him, he seen one who was in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, which are the seven churches, and that one was like unto the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. As the third who are Christians will be in the midst of the fiery furnace in the middle of Daniel's 70th week, which is the woe of the sixth trumpet, you can bet that Jesus Christ will be there through his Holy Spirit to pull many out of that furnace, so that the many that are pulled out can join the few to serve him as his millennial priesthood. While many will be pulled out of Satan's fiery deception, many will stay within it, and will wish they hadn't when the third and final woe, which is the woe of the seventh trumpet, and the Lord's wrath within it, is poured upon them. Although burnt and broken through, those who remain in Satan's deception upon the true Christ's return will have a chance to be purged and refined when our Lord's fire breathes upon them through his millennial priesthood throughout the Lord's day, which is a thousand years. Tried in fire, purged of dross, by given the opportunity to be refined, our Lord is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. The End